Welcome to That's Camellia Podcast. Hey, we're going to unpack some of those questions that you have. We're going to interview some guests and let's have a conversation. Come on, enjoy the show. I have an amazing opportunity to interview Dr. Mariah Prince Allen. She's a board-certified family nurse practitioner with a passion for revolutionizing women's health care. She started her journey at the University of Florida before earning both her master's and doctorate degrees from Duke University. Throughout Mariah's career, she's observed a crucial gap in foundational care for women, which inspired her to take action. She founded Telehealth for Her, a virtual wellness practice dedicated to empowering perimenopausal women. Through this innovative platform, she offers a holistic approach to wellness, focusing on addressing the root causes of symptoms and helping women feel confident and energized. So in addition to her telehealth for her business, Dr. Prince Allen serves as a clinical associate at Duke School of Nursing, and contributes her expertise as a published author in leading nursing journals. Mariah is a sought-after speaker. She's presented at many numerous conferences and retreats, which is where I first met her in Denver. She educates women about perimenopause and empowers them with powerful insights. Come on, let's get going. You're going to love this interview. Welcome back to That's Camellia Podcast. Oh, Mariah Prince, girl, you changed my life back in February. So I am so honored to have you on our podcast because I want you and I want my audience to hear the impact and just the wealth of knowledge that you have in order to equip us to one, find out what this whole perimenopause is, and what to do about it and how to recognize it. So, hey, I'm going to welcome welcome so much to the show. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be a part of your podcast. And since we met in February, you have just been as big of a blessing to my life as I've been to yours. So thank you so much for this opportunity. Oh, thank you so much, Mariah. So, hey, let's get right into this. <sighs> Perimenopause. Are there any typical stages? Yes. So when women seem to think about menopause, we just think of like the end of our menstrual cycle, where we've gone 12 consecutive months without a period. Um, But we're starting to now to educate women on the what we call the menopause transition. So the average woman in America will go through menopause. And that is when you have 12 consecutive months of no period around the age of 52. But we're noticing that anywhere from three to 10 years before that, women are having signs and symptoms related to the hormone imbalances, and we're calling that period perimenopause. So it's just the fluctuation of the hormones, which is estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone, that is leading to some of those symptoms like hot flashes, insomnia, brain fog, and things of that nature. And then menopause itself, as I like to explain to my clients, is literally just one day. It's the day on the calendar where you've had no period for 12 months. And you're like, okay, great. It's been a full year since I've had no menstrual period. Okay, I'm officially in menopause. And the next day you're considered postmenopausal and we'll be in postmenopausal um, for the rest of our lives. So there's technically three stages perimenopause, menopause, and postmenopause. Wow. It's, so it's a, it's really like passing the b- baton of a journey. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so usually women in their late 30s, early 40s are like, what is going on here? Like, <laughs> um, you know, what is this exactly? You know, they're starting to experience, um, you know, some joint aches and, you know, the insomnia, the brain fog, the irregular periods and not being able to quite figure out exactly what it is and what we call this thing. Um, But I think now there's a little bit more education going out to women because like I like to say right now, menopause is having a moment. (laughs) I like that, menopause having a moment. 
Yes, and I think that is too, just because we've had a lot of celebrities come out and be very vocal about their perimenopausal journey and them too, despite all of the resources that they have still being, still lacking knowledge of exactly what was happening to their bodies. And, you know, there's been, you know, some of prominent celebrities like Oprah and Michelle Obama and, you know, all of these ladies now talking about what happened to them during this period and how they were just as confused as the average woman, which mm -hmm. I think says a lot because, you know, women like Oprah and Michelle Obama, they have a ton of resources. So if they're struggling through perimenopause, I hate to say what that means for the rest of us. Like I don't have Oprah's billions of dollars, but it's, she said it took five doctors for them to figure out exactly that her heart palpitations and the fact that she couldn't concentrate on reading was due to perimenopause and not a cardiac event leading her to have a sh unnecessary stress test. Wow. Isn't that something? Yes. So I'm Isn't like, that this five doctors to diagnose Oprah with perimenopause and she has billions of dollars. What does that say about me? <laughs> right. Right. Well, I am blessed and fortunate enough where I only had, it was two doctors. You know, it was one, that male doctor. And then after meeting you, um, I was blessed to be, partnered with Deshauna and I am so good now, but it's awareness about tracking these menopause, menopausal symptoms. You know, I have an older sister, so she was always keeping me on track about what was going on with her with the hot flashes and, and what she ate and the weight gain. But for other women, I think because they don't happen at the same time, right? It could just be considered like a one-off. I'm just having a moment, you know? Exactly. And not every woman experienced menopause the same. And I think just as a general society, when we hear the word menopause, we think of hot flashes. We don't think of low libido. We don't think of joint pain. We don't think of dry eyes. Like we don't think of heart palpitations. You know, we don't think of insomnia. We don't think of those other symptoms. So I love to try to teach women and also my clients that menopause is more than hot flashes. Like it really does impact the quality of life of women and our overall health and wellness. So it's not just menop it's not just hot flashes and some women never experience hot flashes. You know, some women have all the other typical symptoms. Like there's about 35 symptoms of menopause and it's not just hot flashes, but that's what we think of when we hear of menopause. 35 symptoms. Wow. My girlfriend that I interviewed last last week, she says I had about 20 of them. <laughs> and the person and I was listening to somebody and they only rattled off 15. I had 20. So I'm trying to figure out where these other five at because I'm still I'm still having this part of it. And just 35 morale. Oh, my gosh. Yes, that 35 symptoms. And we don't experience them all at the same time. You know, you know, sometimes you may experience, you know, the hot flashes. Sometimes you may experience the irregular periods and the symptoms are not the same in an exact in one woman, nor are they the same in every woman, just because of the personalization of how our body is reacting to these hormone fluctuations. You know, like I'll have some clients that say, okay, yeah, I was experiencing um, the hot flashes, but they're not as bad now and they didn't do anything about them. I'm like, well, that's again, that roller coaster of the hormones. Like they are just kind of fluctuating throughout your body. And I think a lot of times too, we think of, you know, menopause is just, this drastic loss of our hormones. But in that perimenopausal phase, your hormones are not really, like they're overall declining, but as they're declining, they're on like the worst drop of fear roller coaster ride they could ever be on. Like they're just so all over the place, which is why our symptoms are sometimes all over the place and they're not always consistent. Mm, that's exactly right. And that's why when you're tracking these and, and just being aware of what's happening with your body, you know, one minute it might be, you know, it's weight gain. You're dealing with the weight gain part of, it, but then also it could, it could be stress and anxiety yeah. where we don't, people don't even think about stress and anxiety being part of menopause. But one of my girlfriends, she was like, if I started getting stressed, if she got started getting stressed out about a situation, a hot flash was, it was bound to come. She said, I just, I was just so mindful of making myself calm because she knew if she got stressed out, she was going to have a hot flash. I said, oh my gosh, that's crazy. She said, it's craziness. And it is craziness. 
Yeah, and I mean, that makes sense too, because when we're under stress, we have increased inflammation in our bodies. And we all know that, you know, what we know in the perimenopause, menopause space is that increased inflammation exacerbates those typical menopause symptoms such as hot flashes because it's an inflammatory response mm, mm. so let's unpack that about more inflammatory so stress has an inflammatory response is there any way to reduce that just like because oh, i know part of our lifestyle change is gonna we're gonna have to do that i understand that piece of it but can you unpack a little bit more about yeah. the inflammation part yeah for yeah, for sure. So like a decline in our estrogen that triggers inflammation throughout our bodies. So that is where a lot of those symptoms come from. But that's also particularly where some of that unexplained weight gain comes from. So there's women that are like, I've done, you know, I have not changed what I'm eating, I am still exercising the same. And I have this belly that I did not have before. And I don't know where I'm getting it from. I don't know exactly how to put that into perspective. And a lot of times that is inflammation. So I do a really good job of teaching my clients how to bring down inflammation like it's more than just also monitoring your stress you know but really you know it's so easy to tell women oh stress management stress management okay exactly what is stress management in 2024 status post a, a world pandemic right and you know and the status of our economy like that's just what exactly does that even mean so i think a lot of times we have to meet women where they are and it doesn't have even if it's just like okay read can you read for five minutes before you go to bed? Like, can you listen to some calming music? Just whatever we can to just calm down that that um, that stress response in our bodies, right? So if it's just like deep breathing for three minutes or two minutes before you go into this boardroom meeting, right? Just whatever we can do. But it's also in our diet, it is watching what we're eating, picking some foods that are really good anti-inflammatory, like blueberries, and you know, good fish oils and things of that nature to bring some good antioxidants to our system. But I think a lot of the times too, it's also when we talk about inflammation, our environment is a huge impact on our inflammatory response, on our inflammation, and also what disrupts our hormones. So there's a huge push for like looking for environmental disruptors. So like looking at things that we are naturally putting on our body, like what is in your lotions? What is in your cosmetics? What are you washing your clothes with? What are you washing your dishes with? Like, are those clean, natural products? Because we do know that there is a lot of things in our environment, a lot of things that we come into contact with just on a daily basis that disrupts our endocrine system. Hmm, that is really good. That is really good. So blueberries, fish oil, and then our environment, your, what you put on your body, that makes so much sense because I have really sensitive skin, Mariah. So I am very conscious about what, what type of, I use the same type of lotion, same type of shampoo, same type of soap, just because I know what my body can handle. And, and I've known that because my hormones changed after having my last baby, that I'm just like, okay, this body can only take this type of lotion. And that's the only thing I stick with. But how would you know? I mean, that, that, how would a woman know if like her hormones change? I did just because I just happened to have one of those life events change, being pregnant and my hormones change that my body sensitivity all went out of whack and I had to. But what if you don't have that? And we're talking about inflammation. Do you, because a lot of people Google and, and they say, mm -hmm. what can I eat? <laughs> what, what can I do? And I did, and I did a lot of that too. And I spent a lot of money doing that until I got to the end of myself and said, that's enough. I need, I need some professional help. <laughs> exactly. Cause I think a lot, and that's exactly what you just said, professional help. And it really is finding a healthcare provider that is experienced in women's hormone health. And I hear a lot of times that, you know, women say, oh, I went to my doctor. They, you know, they don't, they put me on an antidepressant. They said I'm too young to be in perimenopause. Um, you know, they won't check my hormone levels. Um, you know, they put me on like this patch and just said, oh, let's see if that works. Um, and I tell clients and I tell women even in the social media space, like, do not be mad at your healthcare provider. Like I have a doctor degree in nursing. I, and I learned very, and I'm a family nurse practitioner. So I learned literally from womb to tomb when I was in my nurse practitioner program. 
but I didn't really learn a lot about menopause. Like the primary functional education of women's health is pregnancy, delivery, and postpartum. Like we don't get a lot of education in our medicals, in our traditional medical society about what to do with women who are in this life phase. So we're all still learning. And especially too, like we're coming out of an era where we believe, you know, due to the women's health study, that women, that hormones were bad for women. So prior to that study, we were giving hormone replacement therapy to women like it was candy and they were all feeling great. And then this study came out that, you know, had a lot of different flaws and that changed the societal perspective, that changed the healthcare perspective on giving women hormones. So a lot of providers are still just fearful of that um, because, you know, it said that, you know, it causes blood clots, it causes cancer and all of these things. But I think that is also where it comes to finding a healthcare provider who is up to date on the knowledge and knows how to give you a personalized plan because what works for you will not work for your sister, will not work for your friend. And I think that is truly key in finding someone who will advocate for you and just to come to the realization that you may have to pay out of pocket for quality care. Um, because a lot of the things that we do, unfortunately, are not covered by insurance, you know, and it's just the lay of the land. Um, you know, I've had a, a client recently who I'm sending some labs to LabCorp and I'm like, I really hope these labs are not going to cost her $1,900. Like, I really hope her insurance is going to cover some of this because this is ridiculous. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, I'm, it's just trying to figure out exactly what's going on with her body. Where is some of that inflammation coming from? But I think also too, it's important to not to forget, like, you know, not only just our female sex hormones, like our progesterone, testosterone, and estrogen, but not to forget the thyroid. The thyroid plays a huge, um, it's a huge player in our hormone, in our hormone regulation. And also again, our adrenal glands that helps to provide cortisol, which is what our stress response is. Like those, those organs also play a huge part in all of this. So it's a very a comprehensive care model. And it's not just like, go to this doctor for this thing, go to this doctor for that thing, this doctor for that thing, because you'll end up spending so much more time, money and energy just to get a simple answer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're exactly right. Thyroid, that is definitely another one. And so you're right, you might have to pay out of pocket. And guess what? If we pay for what we want to pay for. So with saying that, if you want to get better, if you want to figure out this whole mystery of your own perimenopause, menopause, postmenopause journey, it might cost you some money and that's okay. You write that in the budget and you get it done just like with any anything else. Anything else that we put our minds to, and I know this as a woman, if I put my mind to something and I want something, oh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make a way for it. I'm going to make allowances for it. And I think because you're going to spend the money regardless, you're going to spend the money either in investing in your health or investing in your sickness. Either way, you're going to spend Ooh, the money. That's good. And I'd rather spend the money investing in my health. Oh, that's good. That's good. I'd rather put it toward my health, too, because I'm going I, I want to live a long time. I got a grandbaby. I want to live a long that time. That my best life. OK. <laughs> <laughs> I want to live a long time. So that is so good. So make sure, um, listeners, that you do go and get professional help and start the journey because every treatment is not going to be the same. I think that's another one of those things because it's not the same. I, I can't just do the same thing that my sister did. I mean, she does the patch. The patch does not work for me. So recognizing, one, it, we're all different. Our bodies are different. So you might have a different journey but you also yeah. talked about weight gain and then bone health how do yeah. how do i protect my bone because mariah i tell you i was having knee problems and i thought it was just maybe i just twisted my knee or something and i wasn't doing anything that i could have twisted my knee or something but my my knee started hurt. i started going to you know a, a knee doctor for him to check out do extra spending that money for them to go check it out and then after talking to you and seeing your presence, I said, oh, my gosh, this, this is a symptom. It is. So, yeah, <laughs> joint pains is one of the classic symptoms that we also don't think about when we think about hormone imbalances. And again, that comes from that 
inflammation, right? So as our hormones, particularly our estrogen, is going down, we're getting inflamed. So anything with an itis, I like to tell people it's an inflammation of something. So arthritis is an inflammation <laughs> of the joints, right? So a lot of the times too, when we are thinking about like that joint pain, right? If again, if we do things to, to treat the root cause of the symptom, not just masking the symptom, we can actually really be able to impact our bones. So another thing too is when we are women, we all know that women are very prone to having osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is basically weakening of the bones. That's when we think of like the older ladies who are falling and breaking a hip. Um, that is because their bones are just so fragile. And that happens when we are losing our estrogen and going through um, perimenopause. But the biggest things we can do to support our bones now when we are in our mid 30s early 40s early 50s is to really start one taking a very quality vitamin d supplement i will do not i have a big rant about supplements i tell my clients please do not take things that are over the counter from target and walmart do not order your supplements from amazon because they've probably been sitting in the warehouse all day you don't we don't there's no quality control of those but a, a good vitamin d3 plus k2 um, that helps with the absorption of the vitamin D. That's going to be very tremendous for your bone health. But another thing that is great for our bones that we sometimes don't think about is, is strength training, like resistance training, lifting weight. Like that is so key and so crucial for our bone health and to help keep our bones healthy, to help keep our bones strong. So when we're not doing those things, we're naturally going to decrease the quality of our bones. And then also to getting a lot of good quality calcium, um, you know, in our foods, in our diet. And then the FDA, because we've noticed that there is a huge proponent of low estrogen and the risk factor for osteoporosis, the FDA has actually approved a patch at a dose of 0 0.025 milligrams. And that, because we know that that is just how much estrogen you need to protect your bones. And that is not a lot, like 0 0.025 milligrams. It's not a lot of estrogen, but that in itself is enough to protect our bones from osteoporosis. So even when I have clients or I talk to women who are like, I'm so terrified of getting an estrogen replacement therapy. And I literally show them a chart of a range of doses and patches and all and creams and all these things. And I'm like, this is the lowest dose possible. And I show them that this is what the FDA has approved because we know that this will impact your bone health. Even if you still wanna have, you know, you don't wanna be on a higher dose to manage your actual symptoms, this lowest dose at the smallest amount is enough to protect your bones because I don't know about you, but I plan to live until my 80s and 90s. I have longevity in my family and I want to be like my grandma, 90 mm -hmm. years old, walking mm -hmm. with, no, you know, mm -hmm. recently got put on a cane. Okay, mm -hmm. I, that's how I want to be. Like, I yeah. don't want to have all these joint and bone replacements. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's good. That's good. So, you, uh, Mariah, you brought up like not ordering your supplements from Amazon or Target. Okay, so I have to ask you. So where do you get them? So if you, if you find, know, I mean, that's where, you know, we're in this digital technology. Every, know, Target right? is right up the street. Amazon, yeah. I could get today. <laughs> if you want medical grade quality supplements. So um, for you, Camille, you say you're connected with Deshauna. Like I'm sure Deshauna has like a full scripts account where she can get you some quality supplements. Oh, um, okay. Also to you, like, yeah. So if you have a healthcare provider, ask them if they have a full scripts account. They can be able to order you um, order you um, medical grade supplements. There, are, a lot of the times too, is like there. Even if you have a provider that you know that has a full scripts account, or you're looking for somebody who has a full scripts, can tell you and kind of guide you. Um, I personally have a full scripts account, and I have a lot of customized um, supplement plans on there for women who are going through menopause and perimenopause. But also too, just like some companies like. Um, designs for health, companies like Pure Encapsulation, companies like Thorn, like you want those companies have medical professionals that work for them that help to develop 
these supplements and their natural ingredients. A lot of the times they're bu just a bunch of fluffers. And I learned that with my own personal experience, like my dad's vitamin D level was always low. And my mom was just so perplexed about that because she's like, he takes a vitamin D3 supplement every single day. I do not understand why his vitamin D level is so low. She's like, he goes outside and he's in the yard. Like I'm just not understanding. And when I learned, because again, I didn't know when I was in my 20s and like late, I got my supplements from Target. My women's one day vitamin came from Target. I didn't know no better. Right, but when right. I learned better, I was like, okay, mom, I'm going to send you a vitamin D3 plus K2 supplement for daddy. Go on full scripts and order it for him. My dad's vitamin D level for the first time ever was normal because he was getting quality supplementation and not just a supplement that probably had some vitamin D3 in it, but a bunch of other fillers because clearly it wasn't working. That's great news. Now, supplements, I have my girlfriend. Um, she also has a full scripts um, account too. Um, shout out to Janae White. But also, are supplements the same for men versus women? Because when you said with your dad, with your daddy, I like how you call your daddy because that's what I used to call my, my daddy is past, but I would call him, oh, my dad, because that's how I felt. I felt that, like that little girl instinct, but yes, I digress. I, I told you I wear many hats, but daddy's girl is the one that I wear the proudest. I am yeah. truly my daddy's little, little princess, <laughs> even though I'm a whole married woman now. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love it. I love it. So are the supplements the same or should men... Should men who are having inflammation, they so need to actually go to their own. So, yeah, there are just like foundational supplements for inflammation. There's foundational supplements for health. So uh -huh. vitamin D is what we all need. Our body, whether you're a man, female, what, um, whatever, however you identify yourself as, we all humans on this earth need vitamin D. It is what's crucial for our bones, right? We all need a quality omega-3 fatty acid to help with the antioxidant and help with that inflammation. My favorite, one of my, I have two favorite supplements that I always recommend to my clients, and that is magnesium um, glycinate. It is amazing for helping women to be able to sleep at night. Um, it's really good for just our overall brain health function. And the other one that I really love is inensitol. It's amazing for helping to regulate blood sugars, helping again to just decrease some of that inflammation. So those are like my, some of my favorite supplements. Those are like the foundation, the backbones of my supplement protocols that I have. And then after that, it gets a little um, more personalized for my clients, but those are kind of like my biggest three. Like, well, yeah, what my was biggest the three. One you said magnesium glycinate, and what was the second Glycinate. one? Um, glycinate. So, and, and it's a tall. Um, I love that one too. Sometimes you can get it in a. It usually can come in a powder or a pill. So for those that don't want to keep taking all, like you know, more, um, they get pill burden overload. Just taking a little bit of powder, mixing it in your morning coffee, or mixing it in like a smoothie or a protein shake. Um, and that really helps with blood sugar control, really helps again with reducing some of that inflammation. Um, it's really good for just like overall hormone, helping to regulate hormones in women. So I, I love it. All right, cool. Oh my goodness. This is so good and so helpful. Okay, so one more thing I wanna talk about, weight gain. I wanna yes. say that's almost like a bad word to me because, <laughs> because weight gain, at, I, I, I've had this up and down, up and down journey with it. But I'm telling you, when this perimenopause came, it just seems like the lower belly, what we call that, that, that upper, that lower belly area. Let's keep it clean. That yeah, lower belly area. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, like, yes, yes. I'm like, God, what I can do now I'm realizing I need to do. The, the whole lifestyle changes is right, but the strength training and resistance, I'm glad you touched on that because that is what the awareness part of what Deshauna had been working me about is, is you need that. It's not a dirty word. You're not going to bulk up like you're going to get these muscles you're or something. No. Incredible hulking. 
not gonna like the Incredible <laughs> Hulk. No, no. The weight gain is normal and it's based upon the distribution of our fat cells. So I like to give clients, I'm a visual person, so I like to give this analogy. When we when we have babies and we have these toddlers and these like little kids, like you know, kindergartners, first grade, they're all walking around this little pooch of a belly, right? They haven't mm -hmm. quite lost what we call their baby fat. And then they mm -hmm. go through puberty, they get all of their good hormones, and now they're just like these skinny, tall kids. Like where did your little belly fat go, right? Mm -hmm. And then when we now are going back through perimenopause, we're starting to lose some of those hormones again. So there comes our little baby fat again, right? Like it's back, where, did you, where were you? you know but it basically is our testosterone is really in and also estrogen they're very important for fat distribution so they keep our fat in our unwanted areas away from our midsection you know like for women we'll have you know more um you know just subcutaneous fat in our hips thighs and gluteus just naturally as women right our bodies preparing us to to birth children um, but as we lose our testosterone, as our estrogen levels fall, we lose that regulation of fat distribution. And that is where the fat cells come back into our bellies. So that is what we call, you know, some women call it their menopause belly. Some women are like, I have, you know, I look pregnant all over again. And a lot of times too, like, that's one of the reasons why I started to incorporate actually like gut health into my comprehensive programs because a lot of the times too it's our gut is such a huge component of our um, um of our immunity and our immune response that sometimes too there could be like a gut problem right like did we mess up the microbiome of our gut um you know are we eating foods that we are now sensitive to that's causing increased inflammation and not that we're allergic to them our body just isn't digesting this food appropriately and it's causing an inflammatory response but I think a lot of the times too, what women can do just naturally is increasing the amount of protein that you're eating because we're naturally going to lose muscle mass. So again, going back to that strength training, going and then also incorporating high quality protein and that too will help our bodies to be able to kind of lose some of that unwanted belly fat. But a lot of the times too, it's again, getting back to the root cause of the problem, especially when you tell me I haven't changed a single thing in my diet. I am still exercising. I always want to know about the quality of your exercise um, because cardio alone will not help you to lose the weight. You've got to incorporate the strength training. Um, it's super duper important and you will lose so much more weight. And when you do, you'll be so much more tone because you've incorporated that strength training. You won't just look kind of like saggy because you've just ran so much because all you did was cardio. You'd have a really toned body. I think that's what we all want. Um, but yeah, it just comes back again to just like watching what we're eating, decreasing that quality, those unprocessed foods. You know, we can't eat the same way that we ate when we were in college and in our 20s and we could just eat fast food every day and have the metabolism, you know, that's super fast. We just don't have that when we're going through perimenopause. A lot of times we have to re jump start our metabolism and really watching what we're eating. And I tell a lot of clients too, it's like the alcohol, like, right? Like we love our wines, we love our cocktails, but we do know that alcohol in, is a, um, is a increases inflammation. Like we know that, right? Mm -hmm. So oh, we don't, don't tell me that. So I tell them, I'm like, yes, drinking a glass of wine every night, probably is not the best thing you could be doing for your belly fat. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, follow those wine drinkers. Not every night. You're gonna have to moderate that. It all in moderation, um, you know, and just doing things, moving our body. So I, I always ask clients, how are you moving your body? Because you are going to have to work so much harder to be able to stay in shape, but you can do it though. It's all about shifting your mindset. It's all about really making sure that you're eating the rainbow. Um, getting those in, good antioxidants and getting quality exercise. You don't have to, I'm not telling you go exercise for an hour. You can go do some weight training things for 15, 20 minutes and you'll get your heart rate up just as well as you did if you ran, if you're really lifting some quality weights. And again, as your body will allow you to. So if you're not a weight trainer, you never lifted weights, 
please do not go to the gym today and think you can like bench press 100 pounds and squat 250. No, you haven't done that. You've never done that, but you can build yourself up to it. I go to a gym here in Durham and I'm always amazed at like the women who are older than me that are just so strong. Like they're so strong and you can see that they're so proud of themselves. You know, when they, I'm in my 60s, you know, I'm in my early 70s and I'm like, what? And, you oh know, but God. they are lifting weights and they're lifting heavy quality weights under the guidance of our um, trainers at the gym but they're doing it and i and i just know that their bodies is loving it they feel good you know they have the energy because when we are really moving our bodies truly how we're supposed to you will feel so much more energized as well and when we're feeding our body quality food all of that stuff helps to just energize our body helps with the mental clarity that we need and to give us the energy to get through our busy, demanding lives. Oh, that is so good. That is so, and you're right. It's look, I've, I've noticed that too. Uh, cardio, see, I love the walk. So walking was my thing, but I also realized my husband brought it up. He's like, you still need the strength train. You you need this, you need to lift weights. I'm not talking about lifting a lot of weights. It, like you said, it's small weights and doing it like 15 minutes, you know, different reps, but something to keep my body moving. And since I work from home, I, I have to be intentional about getting up and doing something. Exactly. And I think we all have gotten so much more, you know, sedentary and life has just been so much more convenient. Like there's people that don't even go to the grocery store anymore. Like they Instacart, you know, all of their <laughs> foods now. So like even just walking through the grocery store, at least you're moving your body. But now it's like, okay, I could just sit at home, be on my phone and everything's coming. Uh -huh. I don't got to move, right? So we, right. just, we also live in a life of convenience. So I think it's just really being intentional because there's 24 hours in a day. And, you know, instead of scrolling your phone on Instagram or, or Facebook or TikTok for 15 minutes, you could have been moving your body, um, you know, doing some quality movement. And I just think all that is key. And while we're talking about exercise, I will throw in my favorite plug is I love Pilates. I'm a Pilates girl. Um, and I get told by the older ladies that's at the Pilates studio that I go to that they're seeing more younger women in Pilates now than they used to. And um, Pilates is very good for women going through menopause um, and going through perimenopause. It's really good for that pelvic floor. So when we talk yes. about, you know, the vaginal dryness, when we talk about the pain with intercourse, um, mm -hmm. when we talk about the urinary incontinence, a lot of that ties back down to our pelvic floor. Um, and Pilates is really, really good for being able to strengthen our pelvic floor, which is, you know, our pelvic organ, but also our lower abdomen. So we're talking about that lower abdominal fat that we all have gained of those fupas um, that we don't want. But Pilates is really good for that. And it also helps with the flexibility. So again, um, when we are being able to move our bodies and move our bodies appropriately, we increasing our flexibility of our muscles, of our body, which also helps us from not to be so stiff. That also helps with our good posture, um, helping to increase our muscle strength. And I also think too, it's really good for helping with balance. Like we know we're talking about as we're getting older, you know, our balance is a little bit off. We know we're at increased risk of falling, but Pilates help with all of that. It's a really good core strengthener. It's really good for pelvic floor. Um, strength, very good for flexibility. It really helps to also improve your concentration because when you're there, you can really only focus on moving, moving and breathing. Like nothing else really can have the, can really occupy your time. And I'm like, you know, I tell clients, you don't have to go and join a Pilates studio. You can YouTube Pilates for menopausal women or Pilates in perimenopause. And I'm sure there'll be tons of YouTube videos that will come up that you can do from the comfort of your own home. Um, but it's a low impact exercise that anyone can do. And it's really, really, really good for pelvic floor. So I always tell clients who are experiencing a lot of, um, you know, vaginal and pelvic organ prolapse and things of that nature to try Pilates and also to invest in a really good pelvic floor physical therapist. Oh, that is really good. Because another thing, I, I like Pilates as well. And once you get some of these moves down, if you're at home watching a, a, a movie, or part of the movie, like you said, 15 minutes or 20 minutes, you could do some of those some of those skills and techniques that you learned in Pilates. But there's a lot of different ways to integrate movement in our bodies. Yeah, it's not always a paid gym membership. A lot of the times it is util utilizing our own body um, with just a few, a little equipment 
um, and being able to get out there and to do what's best because it's it's only not just good for like overall bone health. But when you are moving your body, you're releasing like endorphins that's helping with stress, you know, relieve some of that inflammation, relieving some of that stress, um, you know, you're feeling good at the end of it. Like you feel like you've accomplished something. You know, we always hate like when we, I will self like say that, you know, when I get up in the morning and I have to go to the gym, I'm like, oh, do I really want to get up? Like, you know, it is 420 in the morning. Do I really want to get up and make it to the 510 class? And sometimes I'm literally having a battle with myself, even as I already have gotten out of bed and I'm brushing my teeth. I'm like, I really could just lay back down. And right. I'm like, right, you're already out the bed, you already brushed your teeth. But when I get there, I'm always so glad that I went. Like yeah. always so glad that I went um, because I know that my body needed it. Yeah, yeah. And whatever your motivation is, I mean, some people have to get out and go somewhere. And some people, you know, what one thing COVID taught us that we all of, I think a lot of people just started investing in exercise equipment. So I'm sure we got exercise equipment at home, but some Pilates, you don't even need exercise equipment. It's body weight. Yeah, like you don't even have to have a yoga mat. You just have a nice carpet in your house. Just lay on that. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Mariah, thank you so much for your time today. Let me, one other follow up. One other follow up question about yes. this. We've been talking about all things perimenopause, menopause, postmenopause. What should a person who hears this episode do? And like myself, I see you do. Even when you start, there's still follow up appointments that you have to keep and maintain you yes. as my professional please advise so one i would say for those women who are experiencing any potential symptoms of perimenopause the one thing i want you to know is that you do not have to suffer through this um that there there is help for you um so i know a lot of the times i feel like in this space like how i said at the beginning of the podcast that menopause is having a moment but i think that's only because we're starting to be a little bit more vocal and it took some some prominent women in society to start opening up their mouth and say what they were experiencing. But menopause is the worst kept secret. Um, we a lot of women are suffering in silence, and there is help for you, um, no matter like where you are, no matter what your background is. All women are going to go through menopause if we all live long enough. So just be encouraged, be empowered that there is help for you. And if one person won't help you, you find somebody else. Um, keep searching because you deserve to not suffer in this pivotal point of your life. Because when we think about the age of women who are going through perimenopause, they are the women who are like mid to late 30s to like mm -hmm. mid 50s. Those women are, you know, either have just recently had babies that they're in their mid 30s or late 30s. They are, you know, at the place where they're getting grown children out of the house. Um, they're at a place where their parents are aging, they're helping to take care of their parents, but they're mm -hmm. also at the, most of these women are at the pivotal point of their careers. Mm -hmm. And if you just imagine, you know, how this is truly impacting your entire life. Like not only just you personally, but your relationships, um, you know, your, with significant others or friends and just also your career. So taking all of that into perspective and just knowing that this is already a trying time of your life with all the factors that I've just mentioned, but now you're going to throw perimenopause on it. So just please, please, please seek help. There is someone out there who can help you. There's a, there's, you know, a growing amount of women's hormone health experts and practitioners. Um, for those of you, you know, who I have a telemedicine virtual practice. So I'm licensed in Colorado, North Carolina, Delaware, Washington State, Minnesota, and very soon to be Florida. Um, but if you Hi. live in one of those states that I did not mention, I mean, feel free to reach out to me personally. I can connect you with clients, with people, just like I connected Camila with my girl, Deshauna. Um, mm -hmm. I know a network of women and I'm always can find somebody that I believe is a quality provider because again, too, there's a lot of just random pop-up hormone shops, um, that are popping up because again, menopause is having a moment. So people want to figure out how they can capitalize on this moment, but there are mm -hmm. genuine people out here who just truly want to help you. Um, so just be empowered and be encouraged that there's help and please, for the sake of your own sanity, do not suffer in silence because that those days are gone. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. You're so right. I'm glad celebrities are talking about it. that was the main reason why I started doing this podcast on um, this episode is because 
we need to be talking about this. I know there's a lot of other women out there who have insomnia, hot flashes, weight gain. Let's talk about that. Let's let let's have a conversation about that. So I really do appreciate Mariah, you in my live coming on the podcast. I really appreciate it. And another thing like you hit on Mariah, just the network of support that you provide. That's amazing. We were in Denver. You connected me with Deshauna in Texas. So yes. she's true to her word, ladies. I mean, she will tell you if she don't know how to get to you, she knows somebody who can. And that's what I love, that support, that community of support. Yes, we have to have the same village that, you know, once existed back in the day when I feel like my grandmothers were raising their children. Um, women deserve to have that same village of support when it comes down to their health care. I mean, there's just there's a, so many reasons why, you know, women are, you know, higher risk of having heart attacks and higher risk of having Alzheimer's. Like we really have to take care of ourselves, ladies. And, you know, lean on that friend, find that good health care provider that's going to really take good care of you, really going to nurture you. Um, and really going to empower you because you need, again, it takes a village. Um, and I have, even in my own practice, I have built a village of networking referrals. So, you know, I, I love my, as I said before, I love a public floor therapist. So that is one of my referrals. I'm like, oh, you need to go to public floor PT. Like it, it's going to take a village of us to help take care of you um, because that's what you deserve and that's what you need. You need all of the resources. You need to be loved on. You need to be empowered um, and just find your village um, of women who are willing to support you. Um, and willing to help you get through this journey. Because again, the, these are menopausal symptoms. And if we get to the root cause of it, you don't have to suffer with these symptoms. These things can get better. Like you can like live your best life. You can feel like yourself again. You can fit in your clothes again. Yes. Um, but you've got to take the initiative to get the right help. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much, Mariah. So tell our listeners, if anybody who's out there in your area, how can they get in contact with you? How could they hook up with you so you can change their life? Yeah, so you can visit my website. It is www.telehealthforher, for is spelled out, um, dot com. And then also you can follow me on social media. Um, I am at Telehealth for Her. Um, is my Instagram handle. Telehealth for her is my Facebook handle. And I am in the process now of building a personal brand. Um, so you can follow my Instagram account at it's Mariah Prince Allen. Um, and I'll also soon to have a website at MariahPrinceAllen.com. Um, so just feel free to reach out to me. Um, if you know Camila, Camila, reach out to Camila if you can't remember how to find me and she'll get you in contact with me. Uh, but yeah, feel free to follow me on social media. Um, and I look forward to being able to answer any questions that you ladies may have and be able to be a valuable resource in your life. Thank you so much. And I'll have all of this information in the show notes as well. Thank you so much, Mariah. Thank you so much, Camila. It was so good to speak with you again. All right. That's all we have for today. Join me next time on That's Camelia Podcast. Well, we're going to continue our conversations. Make it a great day.